holidays till Christmas? Remember, Christmas is not about the lights, definitely not just about the gifts, but it's about Jesus. Jesus is the reason for the season. Well, this Christmas, I hope and pray that my friends, as you remember the birth of Jesus, you are waiting with excitement for the coming King. Today, you are in for a treat because we have a very, very special guest, my friend, Pastor Andy, to share God's word. Well, stay tuned. I'll see you after worship. Start to sing about Jesus' power all around me. We gotta let the whole world know that Jesus Christ is on the throne. He's got the power. Everybody's talking about his power. Look up, look down, look all around, and you will see his power. Ooh. Everybody come with me. It's time to sing.
Hey, sunlight. I know you all know who Jesus is, but have you ever wondered why Jesus came in the human form? If you're curious, you're in luck because, come here, come here, because it's Bible time, yeah! So going back to the question, you ever wonder why Jesus came in a human form? Can you imagine if Jesus came as a cheese form, that he would be Jesus, right? Or what if Jesus came as a cute little puppy? He would have been so cute and so cuddly, but we all know that Jesus came as a little baby boy. And there are many, song, many Christmas songs about this idea. And Jesus being born is the whole reason why we celebrate Christmas in the first place. In fact, let's look at Luke 2, 11 together. And this is what it says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. And ever since Jesus was born, we have been celebrating Christmas ever since. But wait a minute, we're not simply asking if Jesus was born or not, but we're here to talk about why Jesus was born as a human. Oops, I forgot, but let's dive in then. It all began with Adam and Eve, you know, the first humans ever. And we all probably know the story, so I'll try my best to summarize it. According to the book of Genesis, on the sixth day of creation, God made Adam in his own image. Then from Adam's rib, Eve was created. Adam and Eve were the first two humans. God gave them dominion over everything on earth, except to this one small, tiny detail, which was not to eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And Adam and Eve were so happy and so joyous, and they were happy to obey because their relationship with God was so good that they didn't want to disobey God. But we are told in Genesis that the serpent tempted Eve to eat from the fruit, from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and Eve fell for the temptation and ate the fruit, and Adam ate the fruit shortly after. And then after that happened, sin entered for the uh, very first time in human history. Sin in its simplest term is disobeying what God wants you and I to do. And when Adam and Eve sinned, it broke the relationship with God and humanity. And ever since then, people have been trying to be in a good relationship with God, but time after time after time, we would fall short of the glory of God. But God loved us so much that he would give us different ways for us to be in a good standing with, uh, with him, in our relationship with him. Whether it was through a sacrifice system where we would sacrifice animals or grain to please God, or it was the prophet system where God would raise up a righteous prophet who would warn God's people of their wrongdoing and telling them to repent or whether it was the king system where people would set up a king who was supposed to lead God's people into worshiping God. But despite all those things, we would continue to sin and break God's heart. But despite our continual failure, God was working on a secret project that would forever restore the broken relationship with him and us. And that secret project was Jesus being born and what we later find out in the Bible is that Jesus was the perfect prophet, was the perfect king, and the perfect sacrifice who would fix the broken relationship that you and I have had with God. And when we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven of our sins and we can know that God is now for us and not against us. And through that, we can have joy. And that's the reason why we have joy, a joy like no other. We can be forgiven our sin, it's just a prayer away, and we know that God will forgive us, and we know that we have something even greater waiting for us, even when we don't feel like it at, at times. And we know that Jesus came in a human form because it wasn't cheese or cute little puppy that needed restoration in their relationship with God, but it was you and I humans. Friends, the question I want to ask you today is, do you know that if you put Jesus in, if you put Jesus into your heart and you have your faith and trust in him, that you can have joy? And if you haven't, if you haven't done it yet, 
What are you waiting for? You can have joy, and I mean true joy, in this Christmas season because Jesus is the reason for the season. Will you join me in prayer? Father, we thank you so much for the love that you have given us. We thank you for forgiving us, and you are faithful in forgiving us whenever we sin and whenever we pray. Thank you for the reason that we have to celebrate this season. And it is only because of you, Jesus, that we can celebrate fully with joy. So will you be with our friends who are listening, who are watching? And if we haven't put our faith in Jesus yet, will you allow us, Holy Spirit compels us, compel us to do so. We are so thankful, we are so grateful. We love you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you have a great day and I hope you have a great week and great Christmas and I will see you next time.